Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up this thing right here, the Canon EOS R8 for triple button autofocusing. What in the heck is triple button autofocusing? Well, it's a way to set this camera up so you can press any one of three different buttons and each one of them will call up a different autofocus system setup, including different autofocus points. So that is pretty cool. Right now, you probably have it set up so you're half pressing the shutter button and that's calling up your autofocus system. Why not get these buttons involved? And this is not dual back button focusing, right? With dual back button focusing, you can only have two buttons and two autofocus systems working. This has three and we use the powerful front shutter button uh, for the first one. And you'll see in a minute, you'll be very, very happy with the setup. I guarantee it. We are also going to do a semi-factory reset as always with my videos. You can skip ahead. I'll make a good table of contents. Uh, I know some of you like to follow along, and so we'll do a factory reset and go from scratch. And therefore, I will show you how to set this up. All right, guys, as with all my videos, I like to do a semi-factory reset just so we can all start on the same page. Now, you certainly don't have to do this. Just go down below, and there's a nice menu set up there. You can just jump to the next section. But let's go ahead and do a factory reset on this thing. So let's go into the menu. And let's go to the little camera. And you guys can tap or you can hit the info button to move. Let's go into number five. Clear custom functions. Boom. Now let's go to the wrench. Let's go to number five. Reset camera. Basic settings. We're going to reset those. I'm just pushing the set button in here. Great. All done. Let's go back in here, back to the wrench, back to number five, back to reset. Now let's reset some other settings. Quick controls. Customize quick controls. Yes. Reset that. Nope. Don't have to reset any of these. But yes, customize controls. Yes. Let's reset that. And custom functions. Definitely reset that. And we can reset my menu as well. All right, now let's go to the mode dial up here and make sure we're all in M for manual. That's the way we'll be setting this up. If you just bought this camera, you're probably in the P mode for program mode. So jump into the M mode. I always shoot in full manual. I recommend that. I won't get into that debate. Now, as you can see, we have a problem with this timing out and powering off right now. So let's go make a couple more changes just so I can make this more amenable for this video. Again, if you want to jump ahead, feel free to do so. But let's get rid of that power thing. So go to the wrench, number three, power savings, and turn all these off. I shoot with these off all the time anyway. The battery life on these EP-17s is horrible. This, this could save you a little bit, about 15 minutes worth. But for me, if I see a rare bird and that bird pops up, I it'll take about two seconds for this to wake up if it's completely asleep, and I just can't have that. So I just take extra batteries with me. Okay, we got that done. Now let's go to the next section. All right, guys, in this section, let's work on this shutter button here. So this is the first button. This is the stock button that is already set up to engage your autofocus system. So if you half press this down, it will lock on whatever autofocus system you have set up. And you can see that nothing's happening because I just did a factory reset. So let's go into the menu and let's all get on the same page. I want you to be able to take this out and go birding with it later on. So let's fly through this menu system. So you don't want JPEGs. You want C-RAW, as I explained in the other video. Okay, nothing else we need to do there. And again, I'm going fast, but I just released a 90-minute video if you want to go really slow and understand all this stuff. Nothing we need to do here. Auto white balance is fine. I do want to change color space to Adobe RGB and picture style to standard. Number five, nothing. Number six, nothing. Don't play with, I don't recommend playing with the burst mode. All right, drive mode. Now, if you're going to go birding, you want to set this in high speed continuous. And then you want to set shutter mode in electronic. So that'll give you 20 frames per second, 
and you'll have a buffer. You have about 100 shots, 90 to 100 shots, which is plenty. And that's constantly holding down the shutter button. Um, so, And you can play with this as you want. For me, though, what I'm going to do so you can hear the clicks, I'm going to go to electronic first curtain, and I'm just going to go to single shot. But I wanted to just show you what you should do if you're going to go birding. Release shutter without card. Why in the world would you ever want that on? Turn that off. Number eight, image review. You should turn this off. If you take a picture, it's going to pull the picture up in the screen for two seconds. I'm actually going to keep that function because I want you to be able to see what I took. And I'm going to put an autofocus point display on. So I'm going to actually keep this on. But you turn this off for birding. Great. Display simulation. So we want to, if you want this accurate with regard to depth of field, you got to make that tweak right there. And display performance. We definitely want that to smooth. Otherwise, this will stutter like a 1920s movie when you're following a bird in flight. And we don't want that. And great. So autofocus menu now. The AF operation. Never be in one shot unless you know what you're doing. You always want to be in servo. So when you're half pressing the shutter button, it's constantly refocusing, refocusing, refocusing. Autofocus area. And again, there's eight of these things. So it will really depend on the environment you're going into. Are you going into a forest? Maybe you want just expand around on. If you're in a wide open field with no trees around, then maybe you want the whole area autofocus on, where the whole screen is the autofocus box. So a good general one though is this expanded AF around. Um, I like this one a lot, so that's what I'll set it up for now, but that will change. And these two settings right here, this is why you paid all the money for this camera. This is the latest EOS ITR AFX top-of-the-line autofocus system, the same one that's in the R3, the same one that's in the R6 Mark II. It is amazing. It's even a generation improved from the EOS R7, which was released only four months earlier. So absolutely amazing. Let's turn it on. I've seen videos where people are turning this off. That's crazy, I think. Subject to detect. So this is subject detection. We want it to detect animals. So this is programmed to detect cats, birds, dogs, and horses. And I've read reports about zebras as well. But birds, that's us. So you have to have this in animals. It won't do very good if you don't have servo on and you don't have animals on. You won't be happy with the performance. I've heard videos say that, oh, you don't really need to mess with these settings. You'll be really happy. You will not be happy because I've accidentally not... I've been in people and not animals, and it doesn't do well. We can leave eye auto detection to auto. Switching track to subjects, let's make that a little bit more sticky. So let's go initial priority. So it, it sticks when the autofocus point locks on to a bird. You want it to stick on that bird, and if the bird flies behind a tree or something, you don't want it to jump on the tree. You want it to stick to where the bird is going to come out to the other side. That's, again, this artificial intelligence at work here. And yes, let's use that. Let's leave cases in auto right now. And I explained this in detail in my other video. Let's turn this assist firing beam off. That doesn't work anyway. We don't want to disturb the animals. Nothing we need here. We can come down. We might as well limit some of these right now. So let's limit some of these autofocus areas. We don't need all eight of these the way we're going to set this up. So in fact, we don't need spot on right now. We don't need one point. We don't need expanded around. We can leave that one. And we can leave two zones. And that's it. So again, you can play with this and do what you want. Autofocus areas, and we should clear this up right now. So Canon calls these autofocus areas, these things right here. These are your eight autofocus areas. They're also known as autofocus points. The menu calls them autofocus points. They used to be called autofocus methods. I like to call them autofocus boxes because they're all boxes. But nevertheless, you can see we have a bunch grayed out and we only have three of these things working right now. And that's all we need. And again, you can do what you want, but I'm showing you how I like to set this up for birding. 
All right, number five. So these are your manual settings. I'm not going to worry about those now because we're going to be shooting. You're going to be shooting in automatic almost all the time, unless it's after dark or early in the morning. Okay, the blue menu, we want to go over to number four. I do want to turn this autofocus point display on. So what does this thing do? If I take a picture, see how it displays where the autofocus box struck the target, that red box? That's why I want to do that. That's invaluable. Connectivity, we're not worrying about. The wrench, we don't need to worry about the wrench. We've already talked about power savings. I might, I mean, you might as well do this. The screen brightness is terrible on this thing. So let's bump the screen brightness up by one. Viewfinder brightness is also not the greatest. I mean, that's where they save the money on this, right? This is basically the guts of the EOS R6 Mark II in the body of the EOS RP. And so the EOS R6 Mark II is a $2,500 camera. This is a $1,500 camera. So they had to save money somewhere. And one of the places is the viewfinder, which is small. These are the same ones that are in the R7. So, I mean, they're okay, but they're not amazing. So it'll help if you turn that up. Number four, nothing there. Number five, nothing there. Firmware still 1.00. This is brand new camera. Nothing has come out, no firmware updates. The little camera, Number two, we don't worry about it. I don't set that anymore. Number three, nothing here. We're going to be coming back to this customized dials a lot. Number four, there's nothing. Number five, there's nothing. I'm not going to worry about the favorites menu. You can put things in there if you want. Go look at my other video and I explained all that. All right, guys, now we're all on the same page. This is set up. I mean, you could go birding with it now. Uh, but one thing about birding is you got to be able to change autofocus points. And you can't go into the menu and AF and number one and AF area. That's way too slow to change between these autofocus points. How about we set up a button where I can click the button, it moves to the next one to the right. I click it again, it moves to the next one, and it just toggles between the autofocus points. That's very cool. Let's set this MFN button right there. Very nicely ergonomically positioned. So I use this all the time to toggle between three different autofocus points. So let me show you how to set that up. Go to menu, little camera, number three, customize buttons. Now let's go find it. So this is a little cartoon of the camera and wherever the glowing dot is, that's, a, that's the target. That's what you're gonna change. There's the MF on button. Don't go to here because that'll change it from movie mode only. We wanna stay in stills mode. Let's go into that, go down one over one, Direct autofocus area selection. That's an amazing button. And you can see that in other buttons too. You can play around with that. But I like it right there. Let's click set. And now watch what happens when I hit that MFN button. Every time I hit the MFN button, it toggles between one of the three autofocus points that I have set up. Great, so we got that problem taken care of. Let's look at these autofocus points for a minute. So there is our whole area. That's fine. So that's just a single autofocus point box with helpers around it. And I explained that in the other video. Uh, this one is too narrow. So let's modify that one. And this one is ridiculous. That's for sports, for basketball or something. So let's modify some of these. So let's make this one a little bit longer. How do we do that? We hit this rectangle button. Then we hit the MFN button. That's also another way to toggle between these two things, if you can remember to hit those two buttons. But this is also the way we can modify these flexible zones. Let's go to number one and quickly hit the rectangle button again, and we can see now we have two new modifications that have occurred, or two button reassignments. So the main dial will control the width of the box. How cool is that? Okay. And then the quick control dial here will control the height of the box. So that's a pretty good size for me. Let's do it again. Let's modify the next flexible zone. So go rectangle button. And by the way, the name of this button is the autofocus point select button. It kind of tells you what it does. I have a separate video coming on that. There's five different functions this has. It's a very powerful little button. But one of the functions is to do what we're doing right here. 
So let's start again. Hit the rectangle button, the MFN button, and now you can toggle, but you can also change. Let's go to number two, flexible zone two, because that's unusable. And let's hit the rectangle button again, and let's make that more usable. We'll use the quick control dial. We'll make this one bigger and use the main dial to make it longer. That's pretty good right there. Great. Now when we hit the MFN button and toggle between these, that's much more usable, right? We have three different autofocus boxes, all of different sizes, and we can use these for different types of habitat that we walk into, right? If I had to keep one only, I would use this one right here. All right, great. Again, if you need more, go to my big video and explain the autofocus system in depth. But remember, with subject tracking and subject detection on, when I half press the shutter, it gives the Canon permission to first look inside the box perimeter. If it can't find an eye or a face or fur or feathers, it has free range to go outside that box and find something and see how it it's going wild. It took a while. It's got the barn owl's eye there, right? If I take my finger off, you can see the box wasn't even on the eye. And we can also see the little tracking box. See the tracking box? That's saying, hey, Doug, I know you want to take a picture of this blue square, but look, I found an eye. Do you want to go over here? And it's kind of saying, hey, move over here. And even if I don't and I half press and hold it, eventually it's going to say, well, you know what? You're just not very smart. There we go. So eventually it does it. If I do want to take a picture of the blue tile, I just quickly push down and I will get the blue tile. All right, but I explained that in detail. Just know right now that subject tracking and subject detection are on and that's why the box, see it even disappears. Some of you might go, oh, there's something wrong. My, uh, my single point around is gone. No, it's not gone. The, the autofocus system has just taken over and basically eliminated it but it's still there. And that's amazing. Okay, so cool. We got a very nice front button set up right now where we can quickly toggle between three and you can add more. Remember, I just got rid of some. You can, you can put more up here. Remember how to do that? Go to the menu, go to autofocus number four, and you can turn on and turn off what you want here. I just, this is the way I set it up. You could do what you want here. But we have a very nice setup. I can quickly toggle between these three setups. That's probably 90% of the day. You're not going to need anything other than that. But problems can arise. What if I want to shoot the little salmon-colored horse there? And how do I move this autofocus box around? Oh my god, the, the joystick is gone. The multi-controller is gone. How do I move this around? Well, remember, or maybe you don't know. Go watch my other video for a full explanation. But this button is amazing right here. This rectangle button, hit it one time and it activates the cross key pad. So now all these cross keys, and some call this the D-pad or the directional pad, it's cross key pad is the official name of it. Now we can move around. What if I want to snap it back to the center, which you're going to have to do because this box gets thrown out of whack a lot in this camera for whatever reason. Hit the garbage can. That knocks it back in the center. Okay? So what if we want to get pokey down there. That's Gumby and pokey. All right, great. We lined them up and I half press and it jumps on the owl. And I can yell at the camera, hey, I want pokey. I can even go fast to try to get it. And no, it just doesn't see pokey enough. It see, sees the fur, feathers, face, eye, and it just is overpowering. So we have to have a way to take a picture of what we want in a crowded environment. And the same thing, if you have a bird that's in the bushes and there's a lot of sticks, the same situation could apply. You have to be able to turn off subject tracking and subject detection quickly. I mean, I could go into the menu and I could go back to number one and I could turn these. It's way too slow. So why don't we set the AF on button to do that with one push? So that's our second button setup we're going to do right now. So let's go modify this AF on button. Go into menu. Let's go into little camera. Let's go to number three, customize buttons. Let's go find it. Is that it? No. Nope. Is that it? And remember, don't be there. You want to be right there. Click the set button. And there's several ways to do this. So stock out of the box. This is set up to automatically start your autofocus system up. 
but so is the front button. So I don't think it's a good idea to use this setting, this autofocus on button setup like this. I mean, it's probably okay and I have done it like that, but every now and then it kind of blinks and it, it just acts a little funny and I don't know if it's my imagination, but there's three places in this menu where you can make these setting changes. So let's use some of the other ones. And there's the other one right there. It's called switch to registered auto function. So let's go into that one or let's tap on that one. And now we haven't done anything yet. We have to set the thing up. So go to info and details and look at all these settings. And if we check and set these, when we push and hold this down, this is the law. This overrides the main menu settings. So let's set our AF area or our autofocus point to the smallest autofocus box there is. This is called spot autofocus. Don't forget to check it. If you don't check it, this won't work. And now it's still not going to work because we have subject tracking, subject detection. Now we have to turn that off. So here is subject tracking. And they call it whole area tracking servo autofocus 357. Uh, <clears throat> it's too long. The old menu subject tracking in the EOS R7 works perfectly because that's what it does. Once the subject detection locks on to your target and detects your target with artificial intelligence, the tracking will track it over the entire frame. And they're just kind of warning you that this is going to go outside the autofocus box. Anyway, I digress. So check it and turn it off. Subject to detect. You have to turn this off as well or it won't work. Great. With these two off, it will work. You don't have to worry about the eye. The eye is not as important as everybody used to say. The eye doesn't really matter that much. It's the subject tracking and subject detection, which is the magic of this camera. Now, be careful because we're not done yet. Go to menu, follow these commands out. You have to click OK and set to make this work. But now let's do our same scenario. Okay, we want to take a picture of Pokey. Let's just half press the shutter button. Okay, it's not working. Now just push down the AF on button and there that calls up the settings we just made. There's our spot autofocus box and it's obviously not jumping outside the perimeters of that box. When I half press the shutter button down, it engages autofocus and it's not jumping anywhere. That's because we turned off subject tracking and subject detection. Take the picture, and we got Pokey just fine. Let's go prove that we got Pokey. Well, you have to hit the playhead button. That'll bring up the last picture that you took, and there we can see the red box right in Pokey, just to prove that we got Pokey. That's all there is to it, guys. So I promised three buttons. Let's set one more up. So right now it's swallow season, and swallows are really hard to shoot because they're moving, the movement's unpredictable. So I like to make a setting for them and I like to put my star button for that one. So let's set the star button up to shoot swallows. Okay, customize buttons, let's go find the star. That's called the AE lock button, but let's just call it the star button. Great. So we can't use this one there's your switch to register auto function. If we set this up, it'll, it'll change the other one. You can only do one of these. But there is another one that's very similar, a computer with an arrow through it down here. That's called register recall shooting function. So it's a little different because by default, we'll see when we go into info and detail, that's where you have to go to make the settings, you can see instead of everything unchecked by default, now everything is checked by default. So we do have to go uncheck everything. That's the only problem with this. Let's leave autofocus area there. And I want to select the whole area autofocus box. So now this entire viewfinder will be the autofocus box. So that's cool. Okay. And then we don't have to set this because I'm going to leave tracking and detection on for this. So there's no sense. If we just uncheck this, it'll take the settings from the menu and we're already set up to have those two engaged. So everything else we want to turn off. Don't forget to turn this off because if you don't, when you push that button down, these will be activated. Great. All right, great. And again, don't forget to follow the prompts out. I just messed up. I got, went out too fast without saving it. It's not saved yet. Go to Menu and go to OK. 
Now we can see there's the there is the register recall shooting function, the little camera with the arrow going through it. Now it's going to work. Okay, now let's see what we've done. So now when we press the star button, you can see it's tracking over the entire frame and you don't have a lot of control over it. Although you do in a way. If you want to get the black and white owl, just put that in the center of the frame and now hit the star button. It'll lock on to that. If I want to get the barn owl, put that in the center of the frame, hit the star button, and it'll lock on to that as well. So you still have a little control. But um, yeah, really good for, for shooting swallows. All right, guys, that will do it. So we, have, we set up the autofocus system quickly, and we set up three buttons to independently control three different autofocus settings. Just to review, we have the shutter button here set up to engage whatever system we have dialed up. And in this case, we just have this single autofocus point box around set up. And we said the way we have it set up, we have tracking and detection on. So it does have permission to go outside the box and look for something like it is doing right now. And now if we want to shoot pokey, we have a problem. If I half press the shutter, it won't lock on to pokey because the background is too busy and it sees the barn owl. Um, so that's okay. We set up the F on button, push that down, and now we have a spot autofocus, but we have tracking and detection off and we can get pokey, no problem. There he is. And if we happen to see a swallow, we need the whole screen to be the tracking box. We just push this star button and it tracks and finds whatever. Found the barn owl again. All right, guys, that'll do it. So if you have any questions about anything, leave them in the comments below and I will get those answered. Let me know how it worked for you. Were you happy with it? I think you're going to be. Also, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Talk to you soon.